I've chose the wrong camera. Yeah, there we go. Good, good start. Car scratch remover. That's great. You know what, scammy bastards? I don't own a. F Hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, oh my god. The, hello. This is the Immaterial Gamers podcast. I, hi, I'm Ryan, and I am not an angry man. Are uh, oh yeah, not 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 angry again. Not ang uh, not angry not, again. Not, not am I angry? No, I'm 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 very very calm. I mean, we just come on, we just coming onto the podcast. We're running a little bit late because um, uh, I was so busy setting up the um, uh, the overlay that I didn't realize I overrun, and then at that point I didn't realize I had a co. I, we were missing a co-host, and and Duncan her saw a bat signal in the sky and went, Batman's not fucking real. But you know what? I'll help out anyway. <laughs> That's what it looked like to me, anyway. Um, uh, I'm rambling. A little bit. Me, I'm just. I got no filler to 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 save you with because I'm just. I'm. I got all kinds of, you know, you know, business shit that I'm googling, and you know, I'm doing. I'm I'm in the middle of doing research about market cap and stuff, and 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 here you are just doing something. I just with my with with my 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 redder beard because I turned the saturation up on my camera after nine months. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, so uh, Duncan Duncan's researching business because of one of the news pieces that I come up with um, this week, and I you know two minutes before the podcast starts says, "Hey Duncan, I might need your business." <laughs> And then Duncan's like, oh, why? What for? And it's like, oh, it's to do with Blizzard and Microsoft. And it's like, oh, shit. Mm. Yep. <laughs> so, um... So, uh, if, if you're seeing the video version of this podcast, or you're watching it live right now, you'll notice there's a gold bar up here. And uh, I think we might as well make a sort of an interesting thing. I've been doing this on the streams anyway, but I'm just going to keep people know. I'm going to keep telling people until they follow. Or they um, I don't know. leave. Right here, it's underneath, underneath my leg, boring. like an idiot, like the stream title. So, 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 so. here's the here's here's how the escalation of this goal has got. And I don't even know if the third part of the goal is even going to happen, or even if, if it's even physically able to happen. Um, but we'll we'll get there. So a while back, joined well, a while back joined Spooktober. This time last month, <laughs> um, I decided to do a stream for Vampire Survivors, of which that will come up on the what's being played a little bit later as well. Um, to go through Vampire Survivors and try and unlock all 140, at the time, achievements in that game in 12 hours. The stream was titled 140 Vampire Survivors Achievements, 12 Hours, 1 Idiot. I was the idiot. The game was Vampire Survivors. The time was 12 hours. It happened. Um, I mean, I guess we were really, really, like, iffy about it. I did it for 11 hours, 59 minutes and 40 seconds and then used 40 seconds as an out. Uh, doesn't matter. The stream ran for 12 hours, 15 minutes anyway. Who cares? But I enjoyed doing that. So I had a hankering to play Sonic Adventure because Sonic Frontiers was coming out and I was hearing a lot of complaints about the the game and whether it was good or bad and it's apparently it's great for a Sonic game but it's still an awful game, you know. That, <laughs> um, that's where the Sonic franchise is at this at this point. Yeah, it's just like, I mean, to be fair, there was there was one that had come up and it was it was James Stephanie Sterling that did it though. It was just it just posted a tweet and hell fury the hell fire fury of Sonic fandom came down on it when she, uh, when she sorry when they wrote Sonic Forces isn't bad. Now that was now that was a game that's been pilloried by Sonic fans as being one of the worst Sonic games ever. Even in spite of the created or the custom feature that everyone wanted so much, OC don't steal. Okay. You could make a character called the Rookie, and you could use a bunch right. of features to make make the Rookie 
whatever you wanted. You could make your own OC in um, in Sonic Forces, but people didn't like it. I thought it was alright, if just a bit railroady, which is weird for a Sonic game because the whole gotta go fast, speedy, 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 was supposed to be part of the, the game, even, even if one of my favourite zones was one of the slowest zones in the you know, sort of like Scrap Brain Zone. But anyway, rambling. That bar. Get us to 100 followers on Twitch. And after the new year, I will play Sonic Adventure for 12 hours and try and get as many of the 130 emblems as possible. Because it's not, not possible to get it. I mean, I looked at the, the thing. If you were just trying to play the main story and only the main story, six and a half hours. If you rushed. I don't intend to rush. So mm. that doesn't leave much time to, you know, get all the emblems, which are side stories and extras. Um, but we were playing uh, Game of Life 2 for play session and Duncan stepped forward himself. And I can't put too many, I can't put gold bars all over the place. So um, Duncan said if we got 100 followers on... No, no, I'm moving the... No. I want to move Duncan's YouTube. fingers. Yeah. So yeah, if Duncan get, get oh, sorry, if we get a hundred a hundred subscribers on YouTube, Duncan because it's his favorite Sonic game. It's also the only Sonic game that I play really at all. Yeah. Uh, he would play um, Sonic Adventure Two. Twelve hours. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I just um, I actually op- cracked it open. Uh, I, just I, a couple hours ago, I did see. I was like, I was about, I was gonna like DM you and just say, "Oh, what are you game practicing?" <laughs> yeah, it was, um, it was an interesting experience. It's sort of a wake up call of like, man, camera controls are not great in that game, and also, um, boy, some of the movement is a little bit buggy. Like, I just like. I don't. I don't know what happened. I was playing Metal Harbor, and I just kind of like walked up to the last goalpost, like the last checkpoint before the fucking rocket takes you off into space. Uh, and uh, I just kind of like bounced off of it and fell off the stage and died. I'm just like, what did I even do wrong? I I, <laughs> I just walked like a totally normal human being, and I just mm. just bonk. very yeah. nice. I mean, Looking it... forward to playing that game for twelve hours. <laughs> Oh dear. Um, but then I've just hold on. I've just realised these. Oh darn. No, this this is even worse than I thought. These these uh boxes aren't even the same size. Oh wait, they my, are. Yeah. It's just my eyes. It's my eyes. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Oh, there might be a pixel out, but I haven't got the time. We're in the middle of the podcast anyway. Oh, but then, Ryan. then I'm trying to fix the UI. Steph made an escalation, which I don't know if we've even agreed to. Um, what, and what I'm really hoping that it doesn't happen. So please, at this point, do not get 150 Twitch followers and 150 Twitch uh, uh, YouTube subscribers by the new year, please. What, uh, what, what, what was it again? What did he say? Uh, he, he, Steph said if we got... Yeah, he remembers. Um... If we got 150 Twitch followers and uh, YouTube subscribers, we would wrangle some way that we would it would become 12 hours two idiots, and the game would be Sonic 06. <laughs> oh god! All right, Sonic 06. Oh no! So let's think of it this way: you can think of all your weird little glitches that might have happened in Sonic Adventure 2, and you'll be grateful for them compared to, <laughs> compared to what we would experience in that. You know, like uh, like the very first part of Sonic 06 where you've got to use light speed dash to get to the first level, but, you know, you light speed dash and Sonic then just does the dash in reverse, then runs off the wall. <laughs> classic. Uh, classic. I, and, you know, it's funny because I've heard, I've heard it's a podcast uh, on this. There was a podcast by a YouTuber and radio presenter that I follow called Tom Campbell. Uh, it's called A History of Sonic the Hedgehog, also just known as The Sonic Podcast. Um, and one of the one of the round table that he had on for that 
um, is the developer of uh, Spectacular Sparky, one of the games that I played this year that I really enjoyed and would suggest that everyone else played, but he talked about the exact same situation, and everyone's done it. Just this weird bug in the fact that in a hub world, Sonic could lose lives, and there was no checkpoint until you completed the first level of the game. So you'd have to do this weird tutorial, you'd have this weird cutscene where Sonic saves his human princess and and, and you know, nearly kisses her, and then you'd have long loading times with this weird little hub world. And if you die during that bit, no save, do it again. I would, you know, back, back I don't think I'd have the patience now than I did when I first played Sonic 06. If that happened to me now, I don't care how valuable or how little value the disc has. I would snap it. <laughs> Sonic 06 is uh it's one of those things where it's like it's it's like the Star Wars holiday special. It's one of those things that just oh. it deserves to be destroyed. Oh god. You know, it earned its fate. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you don't want to destroy it like because you know, it's like you know, it's like well, this is a thing that happened in history and this is mm-hmm. part of our you know, our our pop culture forever. But at the same time it's like if 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 every copy in the world was suddenly like destroyed completely, you'd be like, Yeah, it's fine. It's probably mm. fine. But uh we can, we can live with that. Yeah. Yeah, if you if you want to sort of look at the like the um I say as a as a as a fan of basically of as a fan of that podcast and of his work, it's a small like five part podcast that there apparently is going to be a bonus episode regarding Sonic Frontiers. Um I would have I would have seen actually if we went and did a seventh episode, which would have been the you know the fate of Yuji Naka after um after last week's news of you know being the co creator of Sonic the Edge or getting arrested for insider trading. Mm. But uh that's that's <laughs> that's the link for the for the podcast. Um I say it's just a, it's a fun little couple of hours of just history of everything. I like liked the history of the comic books thing because of the whole idea that there was Sonic the comic in America and Sonic the comic in the UK were two completely different beasts, two different publishing arms doing their own comic book series licensed by Sega at the time so like in so in the UK we had this publishing group uh but in America they used Archie Comics as their company <laughs> so it's like Jesus oh, Ar- Ar- the Archie Comics Sonic the, the Sonic Archie Comics are like they're they're ridiculous but um, some like proper Dragon Ball she Dragon Ball Z shit going on in that yeah. fucking series but yeah, it's a nice little thing to just have. I mean, especially if you're playing podcast games. You know, say you just turn in, you're playing Power Wash Simulator or House Flipper or something. Just flick it on. God, we could do that at one point. Mm, Power Wash Simulator, twelve hours one. No, Ryan, stop. You've got so many. You got so many in the pipeline. And if if we end up getting people, I'll do more. I'll do them fucking monthly. I don't care. As long as they get watched, that's the whole idea. For them. I'm not, I'm not just gonna sit there and do them, and no one watches them. Vampire Vi- Survivors was easy enough to do because people play Vampire Survivors and there's a community, and it was a charity stream. So, meh. I wonder if I'm doing a lot of this because I haven't played much this week, <laughs> and I don't know if you've played much this week. Hmm. What have I played this week? Um. Fuck, not much. Um, you played Pokemon. You Showdown. would think I've been off. I've been off a week. I played Pokemon Showdown. I'm playing Civilization Five with Jacob. Mm. So are you playing that with like DLC or just base game? We um, we started with just the base game because that's all Jacob had. But then he bought the DLC on sale mm. for like eight bucks or something, and uh, so now we're playing the the full, you know you know special edition brave new world business where the yeah. game is like 10 times longer oh god 10 10 times longer oh god well, as, not someone who's, as someone who's never it's finished like, not, a it's, game it's, 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 like, like... 
yeah, it's 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 an it's an exaggeration, of course, but it is one of those, it just adds a lot of time. Like there's a lot of more errors, a lot more technologies. The game mm. just has a longer lifespan. Yeah, but yeah, no, it it civilization is ridiculous. It's, oh. it's just goes forever. Yeah, but I mean that's that's the sort of whole idea. Did you, just remember back in the days, back in the days, Civ, even in like Civ three, even though actually Civ four still had the option as well. Correspondence mode. Do you ever hmm. remember correspondence mode? You could play your turn in Civ offline and send a copy of your turn to someone else who would then play it. It's almost like correspondence chess. Yeah, and I was just, gonna say it's like that's just imagining playing Civilization that way. It's like you could like spend the rest of your life playing a corresponding game of Civilization with somebody. Yeah, and still not get to the bloody end. Yeah, you you know you're in your twenties. Your life is looking good. You just you know you're just getting into your career. You start <laughs> up a game of Correspondence Civilization, and uh, you know by the time you're done, you know you're you've 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 had a full career. You've retired. You've been married for thirty years. Your son's you know. asking you out to Christmas dinner. Yeah, you know, they've they've got they've got you know they're graduating from college, and it's just like, and then I won by taking your capital. Yeah. And it's just like oh, imagine like, imagine doing all it. that and you went with and you just your last correspondence was I hope this letter reaches you well. I have achieved the culture victory. <laughs> there you go. My culture uh, has dominated you. Everyone is now. Everyone is now worshiping neo communism with, with Gandhi. Oh no! <laughs> Look, I just still love the it's memes and the fact that Gandhi would be there all talking about peace and long life and you know non-violent stuff, and then it's just like, Gandhi has waged war and has launched nukes. <laughs> good old good old technical glitches we love them here oh man oh, oh oh we do we do all the time all the time i mean we were we were talking about uh last week was talking to staff about the uh, pokemon violet glitches and i did watch that video that you put in the chat um sort of regarding the, but basically you know with him using pokemon and what else did he use? He used Warzone 2.0, didn't he? As examples of basically, let's let's not let's not beat around the bush. Rushed shit, and the fact that people should think that it's people are just sort of thinking it's acceptable. Because ah, oh, don't worry, we'll fix it later. So which which is this thing we're talking about? It was um... she. It was she. Um. Oh, what's his name? No, no, wait. You placed it in the, you placed it in the dev chat, didn't you? No, it wasn't the dev chat. General. I think it was just draw, in general. Yeah, the general chat. Um, this is getting ridiculous. You're... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good old Charlie. Yeah. Which Charlie? And no, he's he's. I listened to that, and let's be honest, he's not he's not wrong. Yeah, no, I mean it's it's it is silly. It has gotten silly. I I've I've gotten to a point where like I I have a hard time like like supporting games now because like so many of them are just like we're gonna slop this like two thirds finished, barely playable game on your lap. Um you've barely had time to finish playing the one we just gave you, but you're gonna play this one anyway and you're gonna pay full price. No, this isn't negotiable. You're probably gonna have to buy a battle pass of some kind to make it worth your time at all. Mm -hmm. And uh it's there's gonna be glitches, there's gonna be matchmaking problems, there's gonna be lag. There's you gonna know, be there's the gonna be ocean, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah, there's gonna be XYZ fucking double A, double B problems. Mm. With uh, 
with with your gaming experience and then maybe like a month from now the game will be fine by that point you'll move on to something else and it's just like that we've made (laughs) yeah it's like yeah probably either us or or someone we own you know it's like it's it it, like this is what games are now this is this is what how this is what the triple a gaming industry is they they're just not there i can't remember who said it there was like there's like a famous like businessman that that like they're they said something to the effect of and i'm paraphrasing here it's like it's like the more nothing that you can sell to your customers like the you know like the more profit more profitable and successful your company will be Mm -hmm. so it's like you can it's like basically the idea is like you you trick your uh customers into uh believing that they're getting something of value when in reality it's just you know it's it's a cleverly disguised cost saving measure on your part. Yeah. You know, like, uh, like there's a thing, like, um, let's take, uh, arrow chocolate bars, which I don't think are a thing in America. Mm-hmm. Um, but they are in Canada. I'm pretty sure they're in the UK. Yes. Yeah. Um, so basically you've got these chocolate bars and they're full of air bubbles. And it's the whole gimmick. It's like, Oh, it's like, Oh, they yeah, got bubbly, it's bubbly. Got, it's got, creates a texture thing. You know, it's a whole thing. And yeah, arguably that's a thing, but mm-hmm. like, you know, people like to sell air, the manufacturer of Arrow really like to sell Arrow bars because Arrow bars are full of air and don't, <laughs> and they just weigh less and mm. contain less chocolate than other chocolate bars. But are sold for so, exactly the same price of, as say a Mars bars. bar, or, you know, or you know, or whatever, or yeah. or a Hershey bar, you know. So like that's. That's like that's what they mean by like just sell the the more you can sell the more nothing you can sell to, mm-hmm. to people the better off you are and that's basically what the video game companies are doing they're selling you nothing they're selling you incomplete experiences yeah. under half baked experiences games with less content games that have that have shorter campaigns you know they'll whatever they'll they'll put in cutscenes and make you know scripted oh, events Take as long as fucking possible. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll give you these grind these game passes and give you something to grind out day after day. But it's like at the end of the day, they are selling you nothing. They are selling you a lesser version of something that they <laughs> that they could have given you. And it's a yeah. you know and and it's dumb. Like I I, I hate this crap. Mm. You know? it's and it's weird because what they've done is it's it's annoying because what they've seemed to have done is they've took the whole idea of like the early access model and decided to even skip the whole point of early access, which is to bring out a a a feature you know a feature complete or in a sense a functional prototype of a game that's supposed yeah. to use. Um, customer feedback in order to build and improve their game or in the case of you know, some cases uh, to, to allow to give them money to improve on development to then make the product that they intend to make and yeah it, it, it's essentially a beta like it's mm. just like this it's just an evolution on the idea of like a beta test yeah but, you know but, where you know, they you know they release the game to the public to 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 and and charge charge money for it to mm. improve the final product. Yeah, and I think for me the most recent one that's actually worked is Hades. So Super Giant, you know, already had this, and you know, I say this, I say this with a bit of bias that I love the Super Giant games, but you can't say for for Hades and with with where it's come from and fan reception and general popularity of of the game you can't say that their early access endeavor failed i mean it was their first game that they did as early access they did all the other three just as full projects uh, when they when they were done and yeah it's uh you know hades is fantastic it's a fantastic game yeah um and complete is uh, a very important thing it's it is a game that's like it's a full experience. Yeah. 
Yeah, know? because because and, that's and, the thing. Even even with their early access bits, they had these milestones, these development bits, and the way that they sort of they treated it in a sense like a sort of like a, an MMO beta test. Like like you say, they sort of just sort of here's a section of the game. Play this. Keep playing. What works? What doesn't? Once that's complete and works, then we will do the next area. And now you can do the experience as it is, and we'll keep on working. And the back and forth with the fans and making sure the feedback works. Did the tuning of the weapons as they're going as far as I still know they're still doing. They still do balance patches for the weapons in the game just to make sure that the experience is still there. But that that word. Imagine imagine Supergiant Games releasing Hades at full price. And half the functions didn't even work. Now you've got Pokemon Violet. Yeah. Ugh. Or Scarlet. Yeah, well, Scarlet. Oh. yeah which, which is really... Like, I've, I've said this a few times before, but, like, Nintendo is not a company that is in the business or the habit of releasing broken games. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, you can say what you want about the the games or their lack of focus on cutting edge technology and hardware. You can mm-hmm. say what you want about their, um, the genres of games that they play to the, you know, the casualness of the games that they put out. You can say all you want about their overhanded, uh, copyright protection, which is just a Japanese thing in general. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, Nintendo has been, for better or worse, a fairly consistent and reliable source of games that work as intended on launch day. Mm-hmm. And they're pr- they've been good about that pretty much since they they went out. Like like Pokemon is a, 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 the first Pokemon game. It was was pretty poopy in terms of like <laughs> it, it, that's some spaghetti wear shit going on yeah. there. Um, but the mass, the vast majority of you know mainline Nintendo franchise releases have been very functional and very reliable on release, and yeah, you generally have to dig around to find their their flaws and their glitches, mm-hmm. especially the ones that break the game. Yeah, so it's like when you have these like major performance issues and super glitches and like just things that make the game not work properly or may or behave in very strange ways coming out of Nintendo of all companies. It's like, that's a very concerning sign because like, that's not, that's not what they do. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. It's like, they've always had a certain, you know, I've always thought that they had a certain level of pride for lack of a better word. in the, the products that they put out, mm-hmm. you know, their reputation as a gaming company, not a, technology company that has a gaming function yeah within like yeah because that's i think that's that that's where nintendo stands out compared to sony and microsoft at that point is let's let's you know the 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 playstation and the xbox hardware are just departments of those companies nintendo is the gaming company first and foremost yeah. They're also the they're they're now a movie company secondary. We saw yeah, the, wow. we saw the trailer for the Super Smash Brothers film or we saw Black Panther last night. I, oh, I oh don't my. know. I don't know where to go on that. Martin didn't know where to go on that. You'll probably have a better idea once the Mario movie comes out, I guess. Yeah. But I mean I mean to be fair, I, I did laugh at the at the teaser trailer. It was just like penguins coming out of a like an ice castle, and Cooper Troopers stood there with Bowser, who's just like ah attack, and the like the penguin. I, mean, I don't know what the penguins are called in Mario, but I don't know either. But they yeah. just like they just, they just start picking up snowballs, and they're just like ah, and it just zooms out, and they're just like flinging snowballs everywhere. They're just bouncing off Bowser and he doesn't give a shit. He's just there. One one catapult does just knock a Cooper Trooper flying eight miles back and it's just like Aha! Do you yield? 
I do not. And just, you know, wrecks shit. And it's like, oh no, we need a saviour. No one will stop us. And Mario and Chris Pratt, who sounds... Let's let's just let's just get it out of here. Chris Pratt as Mario sounds like Chris Pratt. That was such a bizarre casting choice. It's just like, like okay, like broken record here. Yes, Charles Martinet should have gotten the role, and he could have just done a different voice. It was fine, mm-hmm. but like, okay, failing that, like. Why Chris Pratt of all people? Yeah. Like I can't really think of anyone who makes me think less of Mario than Chris Pratt. The voice, the face, the anything. You Bob know. Hoskins. You know, like just really you could have done pretty much anyone. I could have had Danny DeVito as uh as Mario. No? Just just me? Alright, fair enough. <laughs> Danny DeVito? Eh, why not? <laughs> Egg. Um, oh dear! So I was just uh, just thinking of what I've what I've played, and it's not been much. I've I've got back into Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms, which about as as, as idle games go, you know. <laughs> Woo! Um, so that more Guild Wars. Uh, me and Martin started the one of the expansion storylines. What I actually what we like with Guild Wars is that progression is it's a marketing speak but progression is horizontal you can choose, once you hit 80 and you've done like the first area or whatever, you can do whatever you want and get you where, you know do all the stories in any order you choose do the content in, in any way you want because the whole idea is that progression is based on a on a mastery level instead. So there'll be like features that you'll unlock by mastering certain areas. So in Path of Fire, the mastery in that is based on mounts. So you'll you'll unlock mounts as you go through the game, but or as you go through that expansion, but you'll master the mounts by doing all the challenges in the area, which then improves what the mounts can do. So the first mount that you get is a raptor, and he just runs around, and you can launch, you can launch great distances by jumping, um, you know, and you can go into combat by tail spinning someone. So you just, you'll just leap off your raptor as it tail spins into an enemy, and it'll deal bonus damage and reduce their armor for a little bit while you attack him. But as you level up the mastery of raptor mounts, they'll do different things. So the tail spin, once you level up the first part of the mastery, will deal more damage. The second level will now whirlwind all the enemies into you. The third level will allow you to leap even further on a mount. And then at the end of at the end of every mount's mastery track, it basically is like, all oh, right, now you can take the power of the raptor and use it on any other type of mount that you've got. And it doesn't affect the core gameplay of the, the thing. It's just some extra bit as a mastery. And you can just pick and choose the mastery as you want, put them all together, and then have a fun experience. I want to fish. <laughs> can't fish. Fish! Can't, <laughs> fish! Can't fish yet, but um, that's... Um, that's... That. I want to fish. Yeah, my mine's just like I just love that's the only reason you want to play. But look, I've got to wait for End of Dragons to come out, which maybe, maybe coming out as a, as, as a free expansion to claim off Prime Gaming, it may be a heavy discount on End of Dragons. But either way, I want to do it. Um, but I think that's what I also placed in the general channel, particularly for Martin's benefit, but for anyone else as, a, as, um, as an escapist video series uh, by a YouTuber called uh, Jmate. He's like a, um, a university lecturer on, on, game, on video game design. And he talks about why he considered uh, fishing in Guild uh, Guild Wars Two as the best example of fishing in MMOs. Okay. And not just because of the the whole the whole gameplay mechanic of it. I mean, you've seen how sort of fishing goes. You've you've played Sonic Adventure, uh, Big the Cat. You know, there's that sort of fishing mini game. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna love going back to that one. He says for gritted teeth. Uh, <laughs> As uh, you know, generally, you know, don't break the line, all that stuff. There's the Stardew Valley way, which was reel in the fish in a zone, 
as the fish came up to the water and don't let it get away and shit like that. Guild Wars sort of does the same sort of thing. Keep keep your reel in the middle of a zone and you'll do that. But the whole, his idea of game design wasn't just because of the mechanics of it, but because of this whole, um, you now have a different way to play the, the MMORPG other than just find dude, press one while they press one until one of you falls over sort of mechanic and I think, I think Guild Wars does that differently anyway because of the fact that it doesn't have the traditional quest structure of something like World of Warcraft you know walk up to a village take five million quests where each of them tell you to get five bare asses and <laughs> then head back Guild Wars does it on this weird renown system so you well you earn experience by doing everything mining crafting just exploring, uh, you know, climbing up mountains, stuff like that, or doing renown. So, a renown heart is like an NPC where if you where you do any tasks in an area, it will fill up a bar. And then once the bar's full, you've completed that renown heart and you move on to the next area. But it's it's just like simple, and it all works towards the thing. It's like, all oh, right, I'll go to a farm. Now you can either at this farm, you know, clear grubs you know kill grubs and get rid of them or you can fertilize the plants or you can carry buckets of water to feed uh, you know to fill troughs to fill you know to feed cows all in that one area and you can do that you can do anything in that area that you want in order to do the thing and so that sort of game design method was what he was talking about as to was to high uh, that was to why at the end of it, he said that fishing was the best in Guild Wars 2 because it allowed people to... Well, it's just another example of people playing an MMO their way. And I could probably see him comparing that to something like Black Desert Online, which I've heard was... people That, that game tried to go for a similar way of, of, a, of a leveling structure. It's just like, do what you want. That'll get you the levels. Although that also had apparently also had weird things with season passes and microtransactions which in an MMO you don't need you don't need you don't you don't mm. need season passes and stuff and I mean you know if you really come to it Guild Wars does have this weird you know it doesn't have pay to win items but it does have those conveniences extra bag slots and all that stuff and then you realise at that point Wait, does that mean they gave us less bag slots to make us purchase them? Which, no, to be fair, it's got some decent ones anyway, but still, I'm slagging it off. Okay, right. Enough of the rambling. Let's move on to some news. And, and how much time do you need? Because I could talk about, the, considering we talked about bad game design and game work we could just get the pokemon story out of the way first <laughs> yeah let's let's talk about it because it's fucking you know it's an expansion on the topic we already kind of covered yeah yeah call it call it a little bit of a deviation back onto the right segue that we were looking for <sighs> in spite of everything we've said and therefore what every like every news outlet and fans have said regarding the jankiness that is Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Sky News reports that Nintendo has set a sales record for Scarlet and Violet of 10 million copies in three days in spite of the lowest user scores critically of the franchise. Granted, disclaimer, asterisk, that's Metacritic user scores. And we know that people will give a zero on Metacritic if they don't like the look of a Nintendo executive and say that that's the game's fault. But still, there have been other reviews that have come out in, in regards to it, in, you know, critical, uh, you know, critical problems. I love that according to Sky, previously the lowest scoring game on Unite was uh, uh, the lowest scoring game was Pokemon Unite, but that's probably because of pay-to-win mechanics in a in a MOBA, which should not happen 
in any way, shape, or form. Imagine it should be some... really easy to like make pay to win not a thing in MOBAs. You know, like why don't you just like balance the characters? Imagine, you know? imagine if you imagine if you were playing League of Legends and you were coming up against opponents who purchased who like purchased an item that would grant them a hundred percent AP, AD, and defense. Yeah, it's just sort of like what the fuck. <laughs> um but anyway yeah let's so let's get into pokemon scarlet and violet sets sale records despite being fun the least functional mainline pokemon games of all time yeah that's not that's uh if uh, with the possible with the exception of like the first one maybe mm. and that's debatable because at least the first one ran in fucking 30 frames a second um yeah but so here's the thing I can't stand this like attitude towards gaming. I just can't abide it. There this goes far beyond just people not caring. Mm -hmm. This is people have they've taken a stance with this. They have made a decision when it comes to Pokemon Violet and Scarlet. And that stance is that if people say that a game is bad or they they don't like it and it's from a franchise that you like or that is popular, you should buy it and you should say that you liked it, even in spite of of all the bad things going on. Mm -hmm. It's like I have seen such a strong and pervasive attitude towards completely like disregarding negative criticism towards games that people play it's like you enjoy playing the game i guess that's fine mm -hmm. but you can't go around saying it's a great game if you know it's horribly flawed mm. and broken just just, it's just because like, fandom <laughs> yeah it's like it's almost like a it's it's almost like it's been politicized in a way it's like there's no there's no actual like political like undertones but it is that sort of energy of like these people come out of the woodworks literally like setting actual records in sales literally flinging themselves at the opportunity to have an opinion that is contrary to the overarching negative one that people keep going on about it's it and and like and that's why i i say it it sounds like a it sounds like a political rally because mm. this is it's like it's like it's a reactionary faction of people that have decided that they are just going to throw themselves and all their money at Nintendo and reward them for their in in game freak obviously mm. for their ha completely half assed job of making a game that works and is optimized for you know their only actual console mhm mm cuz this is it like yeah. They've they've killed the 3DS line and they haven't released a sequel to the Switch. This is it. Like this is the only piece of technology that is like representing Nintendo in uh in the hardware scene. What, like, what did they do? It take it took them four years to what give an OLED screen and make it slightly bigger. Yeah, and it's like it's just like you've had time. Not I mean, I know the developers haven't had time because you know they got they got to grind out that you know that uh they got to grind shit out and that's that part of the problem i mean a part of a like... slight part of a slight forgiveness on this and just this is something that we'll just sort of make up is that i know that what a lot of people are turning around saying oh what they they rushed po uh, they rushed scarlet and violet out of the door after arceus and it's like there's two sort of slight disclaimers on that one there were two different teams at game freak working on the mainline game and Arceus. The second Arceus was delayed due to COVID. Um, but that also means that Scarlet and Violet at that point was also having similar delays due to COVID. So it balances out on the fact that there's no excuse. You should have just delayed the game from there. Arceus was functional. Scarlet and Violet wasn't. But just yeah. to just to throw those sort of extra bits in, it wasn't it wasn't one game company working on both games. Well, it was, but it wasn't one team. It was two. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, I don't. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, why not just you know 
Like, like if you physically don't need that many people to make one game and you have spare manpower to make other games, that's fine. That's one mm -hmm. thing. But like, if you could benefit from consolidating your efforts a little bit and actually putting out a decent product and, you know, maybe even putting it out faster mm -hmm. by consolidating your efforts instead of splitting your manpower across two different projects, maybe that's a good idea. Maybe that's a plan. Yeah. I'm, I'm uh, telling you, there but, was absolutely no need for, for Violet and Scarlet to come out now. But it's just like, it's this thing. Like, like I just see it. I see it in video games. I see it in movies. I see mm -hmm. it in TV shows. I see it in all aspects of, in, of uh, entertainment where like these people, I don't know who they are, what they want, where they come from, or what fucking infinite goddamn resources they live their lives with. But they will just see popular thing is is bad and people are not happy and they'll just be like well i'll fix this by fucking dro dropping all of my money on them and telling everyone that they're dumb and stupid and that their opinions are wrong and that they should just like things that are bad you know i don't know who these people are i don't know why they're here and they've infected now the nintendo gaming sphere which was like the last place i expected them to find them yeah it's just, it's just bad. I honestly, it's really shouldn't. There shouldn't just be this, this, this forgiven. I know there's all this idea of gaming goodwill, but then you end up with leaving. You know, you end up with stuff like, you end, you end up with Blizzard, at that point. We're just like, oh, 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 oh. Um, you know, uh, Warcraft Three Reforged came out, and it is a significantly worse game than Warcraft Three. It's supposed to be a remaster of the of a, of a game. You shouldn't, at the bare minimum, at the bare minimum, with a remastered game, you should have the same game, not less fucking features. Have I, have I, have I shared with you my conspiracy theory? Because this is an entirely separate tangent related to that. I have okay. a conspiracy theory about the pandemic, and, it's, and it is literally a global, international, intercompany. This is a pandemic of bad remakes of popular games mm. where the remakes and remasters are just provably functionally inferior to their original version and it is actually a literal waste of money because you already have a better version of this game on your shelf mm -hmm. like this is such an overwhelming problem that's that's been happening lately my conspiracy theory is that secretly these companies are like in a way like kind of sabotaging their own projects and releasing these shitty remakes so that they can sell their modern games better because they'll realize oh shit or the other or the other people will trick themselves into thinking like oh shit these older games are actually way worse than i thought they were i'll let me just buy the newer one it works better that's that's my no, that's my I... crazy hairbrained tinfoil hat conspiracy i mean the, the thing is the thing is most uh, decent you know most decent conspiracies come out with a nugget of truth and it's in there you know it's just like so. at worst we'll like break even because like we've already got kind of all the technology there we already made the game we've already got the engine and you know the sales will drop off after the first week or so and yeah we'll break even and then whatever our next game sells sells even harder because people will want yeah. the new thing yeah, they'll remember the new things that we want. Oh, Jesus. All right. Speak, speak anyway, of, speak but anyway. The, I'm sorry, going, but yeah, no, going back to, yeah, going back to Pokemon and, and, and broken games, it's just like the whole point of games, of reviews, of any piece of entertainment product, or any product, the whole point of reviewing things is to act as a filtration system. It is to try and ward off people from spending money which is not in like people don't just get money for doing nothing yeah some people do but most people don't like, like money think, is think valuable of, of modern cost of living crisis at the moment <laughs> yeah like money is valuable people fucking bleed some people bleed for their money i've bled for my money like mm. it's it has a real serious value and people shouldn't spend it on things that aren't worth spending it on. They shouldn't spend 80 Canadian dollars on a fucking video game that no one cared enough about to bother making it work properly. Yeah. You know, like that's not a good way to spend your money. And you deserve better. You, the consumer, you, the minimum wage fucking 
Starbucks barista who fucking gets stands around for 10 hours, gets yelled at because their st- shit's overpriced and they got to clean up baby puke out of the bathroom. Like you deserve better. You deserve to have better things on offer to spend your money on in entertainment, in furniture, in fucking medicine in everything you deserve the best because it's 2022 technology is amazing the world is amazing we're capable of so many things don't settle for pokemon scarlet and violet don't settle for the triple a gaming industry buy buy yourself something nice yeah oh so speaking of buying something nice um or something microsoft i mean they weren't really speaking buying something nice they, they were they were trying to buy something they're in the process of still buying something but um uh, they 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 may be hitting a roadblock uh, as this polygon article comes out with the headline microsoft's acquisition of activision likely to face federal trade commission lawsuit report says so i needed to i spoke with duncan before we went on the stream for a couple of minutes and like we said in the in the preamble ramble at the beginning um yeah, Duncan was trying to research on 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 some of this because it's it's back to business with Duncan. Um, yeah. What 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 is happening with this? So, you know, as far as as far as I've last left it, you know, there's this seventy billion dollar acquisition, um, that 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 was announced. God, was it was it the end of last year? It's been a while, honestly. It's been so long that I actually thought that the, that the deal had gone through ages ago. I was surprised that this was still like being talked about. Yeah, and yeah, it's, it's you know we thought it was pretty much all done. We knew there was going to be some sort of battle. It's like, is this going to be a monopoly? Can Microsoft do this? Is Sony going to do the same thing? Was there going to be this big studio buying war? And at the end, the only person, the only people that seemed to be buying studios at that point was Embracer Group. Um, you know who embrace everyone, um, even if they then consolidated afterwards. But we don't talk about that. But yeah, so this FTC block, that yeah, could be happening here. As as someone I'm, who's not so be honest, I'm kind of it's like go for it. It's like I'm. I it's, it's. I mean, like. It's one of those things where it's like, I'm not like opposed necessarily to them blocking it for the sake of preventing monopolies. My problem is, why this and why now? Mm. Like, it's not like shit like this doesn't happen all the fucking time in other industries. Like, like where's the FTC when fucking Disney is going around fucking sniping every <laughs> entertainment product on Earth? Yeah. And I mean, as far as yeah, it right from, under their belt. Remember, the the most recent thing was buying out Fox, wasn't it? I don't remember any massive blocks happening. So, sort of in regards to that, there was, I mean, there was basically Fox haggling for a better deal, but there was no, you know. Yeah, and it's just sort of like I'm, I'm just wondering what's going on here, like. Like I'll be honest, I really there's a part of me that really thinks that like my that like Activation Blizzard could could use some new fucking executive management. You know, if they're planning on continuing to exist as a company that wants to be profitable and not hated forever, I they they, they might they might need to, you know, do the do the laund do some laundry. You know what I mean? I I think at that well, point just fucking burn the laundry and buy a new wardrobe. You know, it's like it would like it wouldn't be like the like the worst thing ever. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, I, it's like, I don't know how to feel about it because it's like I don't, I'm not sure like what like the legal basis is here. Like, I don't know uh, what uh, like portion of market share that you need to be considered, you know, a monopoly or mm. like at what point it becomes a concern. Because, like, it could just come down to a simple matter of categorization. Like, yeah. like, okay, I've got this one website here that's, like, looking at, like, that directly compares, like, company market caps by, like, category. Mm. And, uh, like, if I look at, like, I don't know, like, the, the, the largest video game companies by market cap, it says that the market cap for that category is $2.7 trillion. Right. Uh, Microsoft is rocking it at the top. 
at 1.8 trillion but that's the market cap of microsoft as a whole like but only 10 percent of uh microsoft's like revenue can be attributed to gaming and not even all of that's xbox so like so like like at the very most like we're looking at an attribution of 10 percent uh for gaming for microsoft bringing them down to like 180 billion which is i mean it's, i'm not saying it's not a lot of money but mm. that would still put them you know with, with a merger with activision i would still put them in a minority position for the overall like industry like 40 like you know even something like 20 or 30 percent is not unusual for certain um certain industries companies that large exist all the time yeah and and so it's like i'm not sure why it's like is this really just a matter of categorization like because they're in the video game market they have to consider their the full scope of the company mm. when comparing it to the market cap because like, in that case like I don't know what market what Microsoft can do at all because technically speaking, they already make up two thirds of the entire market, even though they really don't because they're not a gaming company. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, they're a tech company that has a gaming yeah, division. They're a technology that's... company. Tech company. Yeah. yeah, technology company with a gaming function, like I was saying earlier. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's a bit weird. I mean, I'm wondering, sort of like. I mean, this is this is this is the company that only the year before had bought Bethesda, and has acquired all their stuff. And and yeah. as 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 we said, fucking embrace a group who aren't just buying. I mean, they aren't just buying game studios, but they're buying production houses and you know the... tech to 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 build everything. And at that point, embrace a group are just a smaller version of Microsoft. At that point, without you know without operating systems. There is actually one thing I, I didn't consider. Um, this might okay. actually be the, the legitimate reason why this is happening. I didn't consider um, uh, region. Right. And when I think about and and going back to it, it's like, yeah, okay. When you think of Microsoft and Activision Blizzard both being American companies and merging together, that would probably create an issue as from like a domestic like U.S. situation or even right. North America if you want to extend it that far. Because that would probably put them in a, a monopoly majority position, right? Okay, uh, so if we if we then take this into account with Sony, who are a Japanese company, but we have studios that are based across the world at that point. Yeah, it's like Microsoft and, and Activision Blizzard are cons are competing against things like Tencent, Sony, Nintendo, you know, EA, Nexon, but they're all over the place. Mm. You know, they're in all kinds of countries. Um, that. That I could now understand, to a point. Yeah, it that makes sense in that instance. What doesn't make sense is what the fuck's up with Disney. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like okay, so like Disney owns like two thirds of the movie industry or whatever. Mm. We're not. We're just gonna let that go. It's like yeah. again, it is. Is it really just a matter of like this? It's just a matter of categorization, you know. For the purposes of legalities, we're gonna move. Disney is gonna call themselves an entertainment company, and because they call themselves an entertainment company instead of a film company or a or a whatever company, they're technically competing against a bunch of other, you know, centibillionaire corporations, and are therefore not actually in a majority stakeholder position, even though like in in certain streams in certain um sub industries like the film industry specifically they really do hold a functionally you know monopolistic position it's just like it really you're really starting to like cut like split hairs when it comes to these you know centibillion and trillion dollar companies the amount of different markets they compete in at the same time it's like categorizing them for legal for like you know legal reasons is so weird and almost arbitrary mm. 
So it's like, I guess, technically speaking, Microsoft and Activision would form a monopoly within the United States, and that probably should be blocked. But if they're going to do that, they need to take that as a precedent and start watching these other big companies a little bit more closely and, you know, start cracking down on them, too. Mickey Mouse is suddenly pulling the collar. <laughs> you know, because... <laughs> uh, the, this whole corporate consolidation thing is getting a little bit scary, a little bit ridiculous at the top. Bring on the megacorps, perfect dark, here we go. Blade Runner, all that shit. Robocop. <laughs> so yeah, there's a part of me that's like, yeah, it's a shame that you know Activision Blizzard is still going to continue to suck because they're not going to be held to any higher power, which is kind of what I was hoping to get out of the uh, Microsoft deal. But at the same yeah. time, it's like I guess that's just natural selection. So indeed. Fuck it, I guess. Yeah. And thus ends another section of what the fuck blizzard. Which more than... <laughs> Yeah. I guess it was more of a what the fuck Microsoft, but I guess yeah. it takes two to tango when it comes to these things, right? You can't just buy a company because you feel like it, you know, there's there's papers to sign, you know, signatures. Indeed. Indeed. Right, uh gonna wrap up with a smaller story then. Um Worlds, League of Legends World Championships had the do, 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 do. biggest underdog story. Of, oh my god. Of DRX, um, who are the first team in Worlds history to go through the play in stage in order to win the World Championship. Wow. Gen- generally, at that point, it's historically been won by teams who made it into the group stages and didn't have to go through the gauntlet that was planes prior. Uh, but they succeeded, and they won. And DRX celebrated that by um, not re-signing the contracts of any of the players or coaching staff. Oh. Nice. They were unable to... It looks like they were unable to re-sign any of the players who have now got world champion on their resume, or world championship coaching staff on their resume, and all of them ended up into being free agents. And so now can just negotiate what they want, with who they want, and as that the, the story that I put in is a Dexterto piece saying that the winning roster is in peril with all players in free agency. Uh, that was on the 22nd of November. Within about five hours of that post coming out, deft uh one of the members of DRX had already signed with one team and another two players have signed uh with somewhere else after that so at the minimum they're not having that they cannot announce their world championship winning roster next year because three-fifths of it and the coaching staff have gone which i don't know if that's i don't know if that is a again a problem with money in esports or if it's just um, yeah it is kind of like i was expecting go- it on their part or what yeah i was yeah, i was gonna say like you know there, there's 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 a few questions lingering in the air and that kind of when that kind of thing happens or it's like one well, number one is like is drx just having financial problems and they're not you know willing to go you know then they're not having a another season well, are the players, you know, letting their contracts expire? Like, you know, mm-hmm. they say that their contracts have expired. That doesn't necessarily mean that they like, like rejected them. That you know, yeah. it's just just couldn't reach a deal. Yeah. Um. You know, you know, going back, you know, you could bring up the bayonetta thing. It's like, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes it's not the company. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm, I'm not saying like uh, the 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 team DRX like diva out and was like, oh, we're world champions now. You're offering us that. Well, we can get a better offer from these guys. So well, fuck you. Yeah. Like, I'm probably probably not what happened, but these things do happen, and it's important to be open minded mm. to these possibilities. Yeah. Um. I mean, but yeah, money in esports is just a funny thing. You know, it's one of those things that it's very difficult to properly monetize yourself in esports because it ain't like traditional sports Mm. you know you don't have billion dollar you know industry support and infrastructure you know it's 
it's it's hard it's it's a yeah. it's a it's a small it's small it's a smaller industry than you think it is you know it's mm-hmm. easy to think with all the arenas and the tens of thousands of attendees sold out tickets you know the enormous player bases it's easy to to think that esports is huge mm. and you know sometimes in terms of viewership it can be huge yeah but it it's a lot smaller than it looks yeah let's financially. let's think of it this way there's a reason why they keep saying it's the red bull it's the red bull baron power play or the you know this is the this is the bud light play of the game and stuff like that is because they need that yeah. sponsorship money and hell yeah the, the margins must be tight at that point i mean if we even look at premier league football a lot of that is loss well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you look at uh, fucking uh, good old Moist Esports yeah. and uh, oh, Mr. Charlie, the fact that he loses somewhere in the neighborhood of approximately a million dollars a year maintaining that that team. Yeah. It's just and that's after, easy. like, sponsorships and stuff have, like, paid for as much as they can. Yeah. So, you know, that'll have to come up. There was an interview that, that I have to say that Sky News did with the league, with the, the head of League of Legends Esports, but I think that might be something to discuss on another podcast in the time, just have it as a sort of a feature thing. But yeah, he was, he was, he was just like talking about that and franchising and why franchising is so important, you know, why teams are uh, spending their money on slots, why certain countries are better for esports than others. You know, taking into account, you know, Korea has got the setup. It's it's esports are almost their national sport these days. You know, and it's oh just... yeah, no, Korea's got the infrastructure and the cultural mindset for esports big time. Mm-hmm. But they also, have, but then of course they also have the big drawback of you know, like the like I got in trouble for for saying shit like this last podcast. Um, but you know, like like ninety nine percent of people who are even like attempting to do esports in a professional capacity are men and uh south korea has that very interesting and arguably outdated but you know what can you do Mm. law where you know every able-bodied man and i don't know if it applies to women i think it's only my mind so so the military service Uh, yeah the 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 mandatory military service which has a real tendency to you know end esports athletes careers because you know, you got to do it by the time you're, you got to do it before you turn 25, I think. Yeah. And generally by that point, you're kind of, you've been there for two years sports. and then you're too old. Yeah. And some, I know that some, based on, like, depending on the game, like sometimes they get into roles where they can actually, like, continue to play a little bit, not like, not in a professional capacity, obviously, just, you know, mm. just sort of like assisting and practice kind of thing like they can sometimes play during their service yeah. um but again it's like very few people come out of uh the service uh as good as they were before and uh, so it is a the, the give of take of yes e- e- esports is big in korea yes they have the infrastructure and even culturally there's there's an aspect to it but they do have certain limitations yeah so it's that's something we'll we'll come back to at some point, uh, but not today because we're in our minute warning. So we better get going at this point. Um, wow, we've run a hundred an hour and fifteen. It hasn't felt like it. <laughs> right. Thanks that's for watching. What happens when you have a big? That's what happens when you have a big dramatic uh, speech slash appeal for you know having oh. some integrity, you know, having some like self respect and dignity when it comes to spending your money. Yeah. True. Right. Thanks for watching the podcast. Thank you for Duncan for being here as well. Uh, please check out all our stuff on Twitch, on YouTube. It's all in the description. The podcast will be available on Thursday in audio form wherever your podcasts are served. So with that, have a good one, and we shall see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye.